Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are going to continue our ongoing Godot 3 tutorial series. Today we are specifically looking at one of the probably shortest but most important subjects we've covered yet. And that is how do you actually publish your damned game? So you might have finished it, you might be ready and you might want to either share it with a friend, host it online or send it to an app store for approval. And uh, yeah, how do you do that? Well that's exactly what we are going to look at today. So here you can see this is Godot 3.0. 2 beta 5 I believe I'm running here the version really doesn't matter even the beta versions use the same basic workflow and you can see here we have a finished quote unquote game that we are ready to publish so let's look at the process of publishing your game now first thing you want to do is come up to project and you'll notice here there is an export option so we're going to click export and then you're going to notice there is absolutely nothing here well what you need to do now is click add Click add here and then you will see you have a number of different platforms available. So you can publish for Android, you can publish for iOS, HTML5, Mac OS X, Windows Universal, Windows Desktop, or Linux and X11 desktop. So what you might be wondering here is what's just between Windows Universal and Windows Desktop? Well, Windows Universal is a subset of Windows that's meant to run across Microsoft's devices. Originally, it had Windows Phone. Uh, you have Windows in the Windows App Store, but you also have Xbox as an option there. But most of the time, you want Windows Desktop if you are working on a Windows PC. So that's what we're going to demonstrate in this particular example. So now that I went ahead and added that, you'll see down here there is an error basically saying there is no export template found at the expected path. Uh, export templates for this platform are missing. So you've got a couple of options at this point. You can, well, you've got one. You can say uh, missing, and then what you can do here is you can go ahead and do a download for the version you are using, and that's actually what I'm going to do. So we'll let that go ahead and uh, we'll pick the location we want to pull it from. Just click there. It will go ahead and connect and download it. And as you'll see, it is a 400 and 32 megabyte file that we are downloading to be able to publish Windows games. That's actually, ironically, about six or seven times the size of a Godot install itself. But it's got all the tooling required to make our executable in this case. Uh, the other option we had, you'll notice, is down here you could do an install from file. You come back over here to the Windows homepage, sorry, the Godot homepage, and you'll see if we scroll down far enough, there is an option for export templates. You'll notice there are export templates for the standard version, which is GD script only, or for the Mono C Sharp version, uh, whichever one you're working with is which one you're going to want to choose. You can download the zip file right here. This is going to be a direct link to the zip and then you can import it the other way as well or like I sh showed in this example we can just go ahead and let it download from its own mirrors. Uh, only problem is now we have to uh, basically wait. So I will be back in a few seconds when this finishes. Well, and I should point out I am using a beta version in this case and generally when you download the templates the download speeds are better than this. This is the end servers result. This isn't my connection. Uh, but again, if you do the official releases or you download it from the homepage and import it as a zip file, it's normally quite a bit substantially faster than what you're experiencing here. But nonetheless, this is going to be fun to watch, so I will return. All right, here we are at the end of the download. So I will show you this process finish. And there you go. So we are at done. All right, so once that is done, unfortunately, the original menu we were done is not there. But you see, you've got the option of re-downloading re that now, or you can uninstall. You can also get rid of the old versions you might have installed on your computer. Uh, but we're good. All right, so now what we want to do is basically go back up here to Project again, and you'll notice we have the export option. And now we have an actual option that we can pick. So we've got Windows Desktop over here. And on the right-hand side, we've got a number of different options available. Now, for the most part, the defaults are going to be fine with you. The kicker that you're going to want to do is come in here and pick where to install it to. And I actually uh, created a folder for this. So it is, as always, in my temp. I called it pub. And then we created a win version here. So let's go ahead, create the win version, and we'll save it to that location. So we're going to create it as an exe. Now you'll notice it didn't actually give a name there. So we'll call this mygame.exe. And then you've got a number of different options. You can um, decide how textures are going to be encoded. Is it 64-bit or not? Um, generally, you're going to want it to be 64-bit in this day and age. Uh, we've got code signing options, so you can encrypt your signature into there. Some stores are going to require that feature or functionality. You can choose an icon file to go with this. I think there's an icon file in this actual directory. No, there's not. Huh. Um, so you need to add the icon file to your project before being able to add it, but just you can add in uh, the file right there. You can do the versioning information, set your com company name, and so on. And once you're good with what you've set there, you simply click Export Project. Uh, again, it's set as my game, or you could have defined the, the name right here, and then click save. At this point in time, it is creating your executable. So um, once that is done, we'll head on back over to Windows Explorer, pub folder, go into the Win directory, and there is your game. 
like so. So we run this, and this would be exactly the same as running it from within Godot. And now you can actually just share these files. The PCK file is some of the resources that your project uses. You just take these two, and you can just ship them off to a friend, uh, a store, host them on your website, whatever. And that is really all that is required for publishing. Now, before we uh, you know finish this topic, there's a couple of other things to cover here. I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail, but there are some things to be aware of here. This tells you how to export. So basically, quite often, you're going to want to do all resources in the projects. You're going to want to stick with the normal. You can also filter out. So if you've got folders in your project file that you don't want included or file types you don't want included, you can have them not included as part of the export. So for example, if you didn't want all TXT files to be included, just put in a uh, star.txt in the exclude directory here, and it won't be included as part of the export. Now, two other neat features you've got here. Um, so we kind of covered the one with the uh, pack file. Uh, the pack file can be used for creating basically DLC. So that's what this separate guy right here is. It's a way of basically you can extend your game uh, with content using this guy. We're not gonna cover that specifically in this video, but what is kind of neat is patches. So what you can do basically is grab in here and um, you can grab an initial version of your project right there. Um, and then when you make changes, you can have it actually just kind of commit a patched version of it. So you don't have to deploy the entire new archive or update. If you make a new updated version, you can just update the uh, you know scripts and resources that you changed and have that update created in a patch. Um, yeah, you've got your PC features being set. Most of those are being configured by the options you set over here. So say if I go BPTPC or whatever, it will show up over here. Or if I go back here and I turn I thought that would have shown up. If I turn 64-bit off, it will come over here as 32. So this is basically being driven by uh, these settings over here. So let's go back to 64-bit. And yeah, you can also pick how your scripts are sent out. So if you're really uh, concerned about people being able to, to execute or reverse engineer the GD scripts that you used, you can actually encrypt them and send in an encryption key and it will encrypt them for you. So that's really kind of the cool stuff that's going on right here. And as I mentioned earlier on, you can create those PCK files and that's an option down here. So you can um, basically export out, you know, additional content and have that used as DLC or, or um, extensions or whatever. That is covered a little bit in the documentation. It's beyond where I want to go with this particular video though. So let's show you one other platform here. So we're going to go ahead, come on up here. We're going to add one more. We'll do HTML5 is now included. Now you notice since we've downloaded the templates, we don't need to do it all again. So you don't have to download a template for each platform you want to support. So now if we want to build for HTML5, you'll see here the options are quite a bit simpler. Um, you got a couple controls over it, have it release or build or whatever. Mostly what you want to do once again is just pick where it's going to be. So I'm going to go up a directory and I'm going to put it in www. So we'll go ahead and save and export project. And now we're going to be creating, uh, we'll call this index. So there is our game being created as a, um, uh, what would that be, a web assembly at this point in time. So let's go back here, see if it got created, because I think we just crashed. <laughs> And so here you can see it was successfully created. And as you can see down here, it uh, did in fact crash. But I don't put that again on Godot. I am using the beta version of the newest release. Uh, do expect that kind of stuff if you are running a beta. And by the way, there's no reason why you have to use a beta or not use a beta. I just happen to have it locally installed. So that's what I used for this video. So don't, don't worry about that crash at all. But you see here, it created our HTML file that we need. It created that pack file, once again, the contents that we need, and some um, basic JavaScript code and the web assembly that's needed to run Godot. And now that we have that, let's test it out. So let's just fire up command prompt here. I have Node installed and I have HTTP server installed. If you don't have Node, it's a great little library. If you do have it installed, you can run, uh, I believe it's npm-g install HTTP server, and then you will globally install HTTP server like I am just about to run. Uh, it's just a local web server. Now, the reason why you have to run that is there are browser limitations on what you can do. Um, when you're working with uh, local, you can't just load up the HTML file in your um, local browser. There's something called cores or I forget what core stands for. Basically, there are different permissions when you're not dealing with a server on the back end. So if you're doing web development, you really want to have some kind of a server, even if it's something super simple like HTTP server that is included with Node. All right, so we're in pub. We want to go into www. Um, you just zoom that up so you can actually see what I'm doing here. All right, so I'm in that directory now, and I'm just gonna go ahead, http-server, current directory, like so, and this is going to create a web server running on 
basically localhost at 8081. Uh, I think I might already actually have one running in the background. So that would be why that's doing that. So I'm going to go up over here and we will go HTTP colon slash slash um, 127.0.0.1. That's just a loop back address, by the way. 8081. And we'll run that. And this is our game running in a browser. There you go. So you see the exact same thing. So we come on back over here. You can see the thing that we published earlier in Windows. So there's the Windows executable version. And so we've just published two different firms. So there we got our Windows version. And then over here we have our browser version. And then if you want to keep adding different versions, uh, it's basically a matter of, you know, just um, adding more in that template for exporting, which unfortunately Godot has crashed. I'm not going to show you the other options there, but you saw there was Android and iOS and so on. Now, iOS probably is a bit of a pain in the butt because um, Apple requires you to do signing using Xcode. Um, so it might generate an output file. I actually can't show you right now because Catalina has completely ruined my MacBook Air. So I don't have a Mac device to actually confirm on. But for most platforms, you saw the process of so the options that you put in are different between platforms, but the process is pretty much identical. So this is how you export your game out from the Godot game engine. And like you saw in this case, to make it so that you can run it on Windows or you can run it in the web. It's the same process for mobile, same process for Linux, same process for Mac and so on. Uh, Hope you guys found that useful, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.